so that's given us a good primer leading into you know, what the technology can do. So let's go to the third round. And uh, Alex, we'll ask you to start this round off. And uh, Ryan, if you can ask the question, please. Yeah, so we've done, like David said, we've done the current. Where do you think these technologies will be in five years? I think uh, if you take Tesla's like example, um, just in the last two, three weeks, they've activated uh, self-driving beta, which means the car will turn left and right for you at stop signs, et cetera. Every single time a person takes over and steers, that memory is captured for some human labeler to assess if that's something they want to incorporate in a model. So if you think about augmenting businesses, for instance, I think naturally interacting with voice you know, doing something like salesforce.com with just like voice memos, signing actions just while you're going to work and like seeing dashboards, um, minority report type stuff, I think mm -hmm. is where it's going. So we're guilty before proven innocent, yeah? Exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you. And um, Denise. the next one, Denise. Yeah, so I really like the way or the direction that Alex took that answer, because in essence, if you think about it, it can do almost and it will be able to do in three to five years, anything that our that our mind will allow it to do. But with the hope that we're continuing to augment the human. So in the instance where he mentioned Tesla and being able to change, you know, interfere, intercept the direction that Tesla would potentially turn then in the same concept with virtual assistants being able to jump into any part of that conversation and take over as a human is going to remain key and important so i think in end where you're going to see it is still crazy doing things that we can't even imagine today but uh -huh. still allowing humans to intercept and make changes or adopt or adapt to at any given time within that process Cool. Okay. So lots of new things in the next five years for sure. Okay. Thank you. And uh, so that's gone around everybody. So we're back to. Um, no, we had Samir wait, still. No, oh, sorry. Yeah, Samir. Yeah. Samir. My bad. Sorry. Go on, Samir. Yeah. My answer actually is a little different than Alex and Denise. I don't agree there will be any new uh, weird technology that will come up due to AI. We are in a phase where we have built a framework where we will just develop what we have more, right? For example, uh, autonomous driving. Right now we have in the cars, we will have trucks. We, we might have boats who will be doing the autonomous driving. Uh, mobile phones, right? Like we have camera which can uh, flip both sides. We'll have camera which can do a... a in iPhone, you do the live photos, right? It will be something which can do live editing in the photo as well because Samsung is launching same kinds of camera. Xiaomi is launching same kind of camera. Uh, this is like always, this is the discussion with any technology which is out there that in the five years, it is going to change the world, but it never happens, right? Mm -hmm. I just yep. remember the five years ago, how we had our first, uh, the, the iPhone that we have and what we have right now. It's almost similar, right? We just have changed the shape of the phone, right? And changed the processing speed. So right now we are still in a phase where we need higher processing speed to make our data do more with what we are doing right now. Okay, all right, interesting. So it's got potential, but we need more processing. So, so can I ask a question since we're oh. able to think a little? So Samir, in regards to that, are you talking more around, you know, now that we're offering the 5G network, so you are expecting that we're gonna see potentially larger processing in that respect? Uh, actually, uh, again, the answer is twofold, right? You need data to do any kind of data science, right? And to do data science, there is n number of steps that you need to do, which is right from the data engineering, data wrangling, EDA, then define the process and then do the data science, right? The problem is right now, the internet users around the world, they still operate in 3G and band of 2Gs, right? Which is around 70% uh, of the user with the Starnet and Starlink up, it will increase the bandwidth of 5G. And then we might be able to jump onto 6G and 7G in the next five years, because that is, which is clearly laid out plan there, we will go. And as and when we are generating more data, we have to generate the computer systems also. 
Mm-hmm. The laptop which we are using or any one of you is using, it has i7, let's say i7, uh, 9th generation, 13th generation, right? The problem is we haven't changed the laptop structure since we had it, like let's say whenever the first laptop was developed. Did we change anything there? No, not yet. But we are changing the processing speed, right? So we need to be able to handle that much data which we have and make that supercomputer stay very small so that we can do any kind of processing. Yeah, autonomous driving, that is possible, but uh, it took Tesla at least 10 years to learn how to do that thing, right? Amazon does the best recommendation engine in the world, but it took them 20 years to reach there. Facebook, again, does a good job in recommending what next product or next reel you have to watch on Instagram and TikTok. And they're still learning it, which is they started it three years ago. So it's, it's like right now we are in a process where we are just learning what data we can do. You all have seen about Web3, NFT, crypto, right? Does it make sense? Everybody is saying like Web3, the success chance is 2%. Crypto success chance is 5%, right? Problem is, these are the stepping stones. There might be, based on this technology, we will build product after 5 years, 10 years, which can be useful for us. So we are in a phase where we are just building the frameworks around different technology so that we can understand actually what we want to do with it. Do we want a system which can play a better game than human? Does it add any value to our society? I don't think so. And and this is my personal opinion because I don't think anybody is playing better computer game will add value to our society. But can there be a system which is like, let's say automated HR system. You just apply for the job, all the interview and everything process done with the VR and AR and you get the final job offer within that day. Can that add the value to society? Of course, yes, because it will reduce on your hiring time to a day and it will reduce on the cost. But are we there yet? The answer is no, because we don't have the capability to have store that data, process that data, and then clear make a framework around it so that nobody is saying that, oh, you are stealing the data or you are uh, selling our data to different company. We don't have a framework around that. Okay. All right, Alex, I noticed in the chat you were talking about some uh, 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 something called uh, Edge ML. Can you, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so Edge Compute is like when you have a Tesla that has all the models sitting on the device. The training occurs off-site, and if you can imagine even doing car detection, you have probably tens of millions, if not trillions, of images now with all the models of cars, right? Well, the model itself is deployed on the car so you can interact. So Compute's getting smaller. So to Samir's point, I think you know more and more capabilities, even voice detection is being put on something that doesn't need Wi-Fi. And there's some powerful capabilities if you think about, you know, there's an Airbus concept, for instance, that has a pilot and an air taxi. So Dubai, as well as the Middle East, are coming up with air taxis. Well, I don't see it inconceivable one day where someone's not even in the cockpit view, like someone like you is flying, and any pilot in the world can dial into your air taxi one day, right? And maybe that's a little extreme, but they're definitely doing unman- unmanned stuff on the defense side. So if you think about maybe there's a person, but that person has two years of experience with a standby pilot of 30 years experience in the cockpit. Now think about all the things you could do if you had the edge compute as well as the capability and dial in real time to those experts all over the world. The world becomes a very interesting place. Um, and I'll expand on one more point. Like there's probably gonna be a lot of interesting concepts created if you can create rules around something and an equation around something, you can machine learning it. So like, what if a kid could go design a Tesla with their voice or a model of a robot like R2-D2 and up pops 20 different models, right? You can do artwork now, but what if you could do designs on engineering? That, that fast tracks a lot of innovation concepts in the world where maybe the kids are making millions of dollars at six to 10 years old because they just have people like us fueling their ideas and giving our expertise to some of these people who have the best ideas, right? It's a fun world to think about. So it's slightly different from the lemonade stand then. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, an interesting place for us to go. So it, so the Edge ed ML is actually putting the processing on the platform, not in a central central repository. Correct. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's uh, we're we're doing good for time. 